Today, we're going to be talking about real-time legalization with simultaneous loudness control with our new LE2 with the K option, that's the Karma Audio RT loudness processing option. Now, the LE2 is an SD, HD, and Dual Link 444 legalizer with simultaneous composite and RGB gamut control and our proprietary clobbering ring suppression, which proactively reduces the chance of your tapes being rejected. In addition to doing that, we've now added with the K option full uh, ITUR BS1770 loudness processing and true peak correction as well. So this will do surround sound, loudness control, and true peak processing on every single channel. We're going to be testing that today. Uh, we've got one of these cards in our, one of our Flexibox chassis, six cards to a chassis, uh, remotable panels, Ethernet monitoring and status. Uh, we're going to run through, from our final cut system through our card in our chassis, and then we're coming into this TSL outboard loudness monitoring system so that we can see the uh, PPM meters and loudness history for the clip we're playing. And we're just going to be playing a short 50 second clip that's got some nice audio dynamics in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up a close up of our monitoring system and then I'll play the clip through in raw form without any processing so you can see the PPM behavior and the uh, loudness history for it. Okay, so there's my excerpt. You should have been able to see that there were a number of instances in there where the PPMs were peaking way over. We're working to PPM6, which is uh, minus 10 dBTP. PPMs were peaking way into the red on a couple of bits of that segment there. And looking at the loudness history, you should be able to see that there's quite a significant amount that's in the red. That's over 0 LU. And in this instance, we're running with a minus 18 LUFS reference. Okay, so we're going to for a UK peak level type approach. Now what I'm going to do is just going to go through quickly uh, some of the menus options that are in the Karma Audio Processing and then we'll show the same clip but run through with the real-time processing enabled. So coming over to the unit over here and I'll give you a close-up of uh, what's going on with these menus. You can see at the moment that the Karma Audio is disabled. Uh, I'm just going to turn that back on again. First thing I've got is I've got a menu which allows me to set up my channel allocations. So here I'm on a channel preset. I'm using SMPTE 323 mode A and that gives me my channel allocations. If I need to, I can go in and I can customize those channel allocations, or I can select from a, a range of, of standard presets, including stereo. Let's go back to my 320MA, which is the same configuration as I'm running out of Final Cut at the moment. I'm just gonna come back out of that. Next, I've got my limits menu, and if I go into there, the big limit here is this minus 18 LUFS. So that's my target limit. That's the point at which my uh, loudness correction is gonna become active. Then if I go into the specifics of the loudness, this is now controlling the correction. So I have a, a rate for my attack and a rate for my decay. This is how the system's gonna manipulate the overall gain and it processes all channels in parallel so that it retains the uh, audio imaging. So in this case, I've got a minus 18 LU a second attack and a two LU a second decay. So this means I'm, I'm reducing my loudness fairly quickly, but I'm allowing that to settle out over a relatively long period of time means if I come to a loud section, most of the loudness processing will be done at the beginning, and that from that point onwards, pretty much the loudness will, will coast through until the loud section ends, and then the loudness will recover back to normal. And I'm averaging here over a 0.4 second window. The length of the window affects the response time of the unit. In this instance, I'm setting mine fairly aggressively. I'm running with a 400 millisecond window and a minus 18 LU a second attack rate. So this should track pretty closely to my desired uh, target loudness. I've also got peak processing options in here. And as I say, I'm working to PPM6, which uh, in dB true peak is uh, minus 10 dB. 
So I've got my peak clip set to minus 10 dBTP, my peak knee minus 11, just to give me a little bit of space uh, to manipulate and maintain my, uh, my audio shaping. And I'm running with a, a peak compression ratio of two to one. So that's the unit set up, just to confirm it is now enabled. I'm just gonna go back and I'm gonna run through that clip again uh, and we'll show the uh, PPM meters and the loudness history again. Now, if you're watching the PPM meters, you should notice now that none of them will peak over that PPM 6. And if you're looking at the loudness history, then you should see that we're staying below that zero LU reference line. There we go, there's my clip. So you can see we, we never went over the PPM6. And looking at the loudness history, you can see that we're nicely constrained within our minus uh, 18 LUFS limit, in this case, zero LU. And if I bring up the unprocessed loudness history next to it, you can see that the effect of the processing and the loudness of the clip is now constrained to our zero LU limit quite effectively. Now, I wanna show you how important the true peak processing is on top of just the plain loudness correction. So what I'm going to do now is go in and disable the true peak processing and then we'll run the same clip uh, without the peak processing and what we're going to do is bring up the uh, PPMs for the peak processed and the non-peak processed side by side so you can see how important that peak processing is in terms of hitting our uh, PPM specs. So I'm just going to go back in here uh, into limits, into peak, and I'm just going to dial out my peak clip and knee so that they won't have any effect. Come back and run my clip, and we'll bring up the uh, processed PPMs and the non-processed PPMs so you've got them side by side to compare. And now I'm just going to run my clip through again. So here, for example, you can clearly see that without the peak processing, despite the loudness correction, the PPM meters are still peaking over our PPM6 requirement. Whereas with the true peak processing turned on, we're nicely constrained within that PPM6 limit. And again here, right towards the end of the clip, the same situation. The loudness is being controlled, but the PPM meters are still showing that without the peak processing, we're exceeding our PPM6 limit. And if we were giving this to a broadcaster, this would be rejected as a technical fail. So hopefully that's given you an idea of the Karma Audio RT loudness and true peak processing that's available as the K option for our LE2 legalizer range. And I'm sure you'll agree that it's an ideal tool for broadcasters who want to ensure that nothing they transmit is illegal either in terms of video gamut or in terms of excessive loudness and peak program levels. If you'd like to find out more information, you can go to our website, that's www.iheight.com slash karma audio, that's K-A-R-M-A-U-D-I-O dot A-S-P that'll take you straight to the information on Karma Audio RT.